Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're going to be starting off a new segment for people who want to get their admissions at Shivnadar University. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at some questions for SNUSAT for the subject of physics. So let's start off with our first question. So how do we solve this question? Well, let's look at the masses uh, of all of the four options in terms of a common SI unit. So let's look at them in kgs. The mass of a neutron is 1.67 into 10 raised to minus 27 kilograms. So kgs. So uh, as you can see, the neutron mass is very less than one kg. So therefore we cannot use it for you know, masses for stars and galaxies, because they are infinitely larger than a neutron. Option C, nuclear mass. Again, nuclear mass, again, depends on mass of protons and neutrons. So again, it will be similar to the mass, to the, re the order of the mass of the neutron. So therefore, option C is again incorrect, because the masses of stars and galaxies are again infinitely larger. What about option B, Earth's mass? We know that Earth is quite heavy. So what is the Earth's mass? The Earth's mass is estimated to be 5.97 into 10 raised to 24 kilograms. Well, that seems pretty reasonable for a star or a galaxy. But if you remember, the Sun has enough volume to contain one million Earths. So technically, the masses of stars and galaxies would still be would still be too big to be measured using the Earth's mass. So therefore, option B is incorrect. The correct option would be option D, solar mass. One solar mass unit is equal to two into ten raised to thirty kilograms. So as you can see, it is a million kilograms a million kilograms larger than the Earth's mass. So it's pretty clear that the uh, using solar mass is the best way to compare masses of stars and galaxies because, well, the sun is a star and there are stars which are smaller than it, which are larger than it, so you can use the solar mass to, you know, calculate that. And then galaxies contain stars, so therefore, again, the number wouldn't be as big as using the other three units. So therefore, option D, solar mass is the correct answer. Now let's look at another question. Identify the pair which has different dimensions. So what is the concept we're talking about? We're talking about dimensional analysis. So in physics, we have seven fundamental units which are dimensional which means that they can be used as dimensions, so they can be combined to form other units. So many of the physical quantities can be expressed in terms of their uh, individual dimensions. So the dimensions are mass, length, time, temperature, energy, number of moles, and candela, which is the unit for light. So these are the seven fundamental units in physics and any other constant or, um, quant or physical quantity can be represented as the com combination of these dimensions. There are some quantities which are dimensionless, but that's a different story. So let's look at all the quantities given here, all the quantities and constants given here, and then find out their dimensions. All of these are dimensional, by the way. So let's start off with Planck's constant. The Planck's constant, or H, is the constant that we use in the photoelectric effect, where energy equals H times the frequency. So finding H is pretty simple. Divide energy by the frequency. 
So that means we need to use the dimensional formula for energy. So energy has the same dimensions as work. And uh, work is force times displacement. Force is mass times acceleration. So it'll be mass times acceleration times displacement. Acceleration is distance divided by time square. So therefore, overall, the dimensions would break down into m l squared t power minus 2. This is the dimensional formula for energy. Then for frequency, it's t raised to minus 1. But the thing is, frequency is in the denominator. So in the denominator, we have t raised to minus 1. So we take that. So when we take that to the numerator, it would be t raised to 1. So as you can see, um, the the two dimensional formulas are ml squared t power minus 2 and t. So when we multiply them together, we get ml squared t power minus 1. So the common ones uh, are multiplied. So when they're multiplied, their exponents are added because they have the same base. So t power minus 2 plus 1 is t power minus 1. So the Planck's constant has the dimensional formula ml squared t power minus 1. Let's look at angular momentum. Now, angular momentum is represented as L, and its formula is mass times velocity times radius, because we're in a circular motion. So the, dimen the dimensions here, M is mass, mass, has, mass is uh, one of the seven fundamental units, so it has its own dimension. And uh, velocity is distance by time, so therefore LT power minus 1. And then R is distance again, so that's L. So therefore, the dimensional formula for L would be M L squared T power minus 1. Now, as you can see, Planck's constant and angular momentum have the same dimensions. And here we are asked to identify the ones with different dimensions. So option A is incorrect. Now, let's look at the other quantities here. Now we have impulse. Now, impulse, or delta P, is represented as F times delta T. So impulse is basically the change in momentum. So therefore, we multiply force by time. Again, force is mass times acceleration. So we have ml t power minus 2 times time. So what we get is ml t powered minus 1 as the di dimensional formula for impulse. Now let's look at linear momentum linear momentum represented by P. So uh, linear momentum is mass times velocity. So that will be mass times LT powered minus 1. So therefore, MLT power minus 1 would be the formula, the dimensional formula for linear momentum. So therefore, impulse and linear momentum have the same dimension, so option B is incorrect. Now let's look at frequency. Frequency is represented as 1 by time, so therefore its dimensional formula will be t powered minus 1. Now for option 3, angular momentum and frequency are the elements of the pair. So as you can see, angular momentum has the dimensional formula ml squared t power minus 1, while frequency has t powered minus 1. So therefore, option C would be the correct option because, well, they have different dimensions. If we look at pressure and Young's modulus, it'll be the same. So pressure is force upon area, force is ml t powered minus 2, and area is l powered minus 2. So therefore, what we're going to get is m l raised to minus 1, t raised to minus 2. Now, the Young's modulus is 
is calculated as stress upon strain. Strain is the denominator and this quantity is dimensionless. Stress is force upon area. So that means it has the same dimensions as pressure. So it'll be m l raised to minus 1, t raised to minus 2. So as you can see, pressure and Young's modulus have the same dimensions. Um, so that means option D is also incorrect. The right option is option C, angular momentum and frequency. Frequency has t raised to minus 1 as its dimension. Well, angular momentum has m l squared t powered minus 1. Now, let's look at our final question. For this, again, we need to look at all of the options. Let's start with option A. Option A says torque. Now, torque is calculated using the formula RF sine theta. Now, sine of theta or sine of any angle is a dimensionless quantity. The reason being that angle, the angular distance is dimensionless. So, therefore, the only quantities that we're going to be dealing with is R and F. R is the radius, so that would be L, and then F is force, so that's MLT powered minus 2. So therefore, the value of torque would be ML squared T powered minus 2. So therefore, Option A, torque, is incorrect because the, di the dimensional formula given is m raised to 0, l squared t power minus 2. Here we have the coefficient of n, the exponent of n as 1. Now let's look at option B, angular momentum. So we have looked at this in the previous question. So it's basically mvr, mass, velocity, mass and velocity times radius, so that would be m times l t raised to minus 1 times l. So therefore, the formula here is m l squared t powered minus 1. So therefore, option b again is incorrect. Let's look at option d. Coefficient of thermal conductivity. Now that can be represented as power over distance times temperature. So when we, when we use the dimen dimensional formula, power is energy over time. So therefore we get m l squared t power minus 3. And distance is L, so you have L powered minus 1 because it was in the denominator. Temperature, K powered minus 1 here because it was in the denominator. So the final formula here would be M L squared, I mean M L raised to 1, T raised to minus 3, K raised to minus 1. In our question, there is no mentioning of the dimensional unit K, so therefore Option D is also incorrect. The right answer is option C, latent heat. So what is latent heat? Latent heat is energy over mass. So that is equal to ML squared T power minus 2 times M raised to minus 1. So M raised to 1 and M raised to minus 1 cancel each other out. So what we get is M raised to 0, L squared T power minus 2. So therefore, option C, latent heat, is the correct answer for, the dim for having the dimensional formula m0 l square t raised to minus 2. Again, it has to do with the concept of latent heat, which is energy over mass. So therefore, the right answer for this question is option C. Now that concludes this episode of Snooze App Prep. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Agile Rank Mate.